Places in the World, uh, hosted by the International Association for Worksite Health Promotion and the Global Center for Healthy Workplaces. And today we're very glad to have uh, the winner of the large enterprise category of the Global Healthy Workplace Awards um, present their case study, which is Telefonica do Brasil. Before I uh, would like to introduce our, our speakers for today's webinar and, and, and hand over, uh, I'd like to give you a, a quick overview of the uh, Global Healthy Workplace Awards. And I know some of you are, are familiar with them, but I know some of you are not. So the, um, the awards are hosted by the Global Center for Healthy Workplaces, which is um, constituted, uh, which is governed, I should say, by two organizations, International Health Consulting, which is uh, uh, my consulting company, and I'm Wolf Kirsten, um, and iGenius, which is a world community of social, un social entrepreneurs with members in over 200 countries um, with a base in, in London, UK. Um, we're now in our third year, so we've had uh, two successful years uh, behind us. And uh, I'll say a little bit uh, something about the, the winners besides Telefonica from, from this year. But I would like also like to uh, point out that on our advisory board, we have a, a number of uh, organizations from really all over the world um, which provide invaluable input to, to our process and uh, to the awards in, overall. Um, the International Association for Works at Health Promotion, obviously, they're, they're on the advisory board. The International Organizations of Employers, which uh, is the umbrella uh, organization of all national employer federations. So it, it gives some good access to, to all kinds of employers all over the world. Um, the uh, International Institute for Health Promotion, IIHP, at uh, American University in Washington, D.C., the European Network for Workplace Health Promotion um, has been around for, for a long time, since the mid-90s, uh, providing really good uh, uh, input and uh, materials in Europe. The Health Enhancement Research Organization, or HERO, for those of you in the U.S. are probably uh, familiar with that organization. Uh, People in Aid, which is, uh, um, uh, covers kind of the NGO world in terms of um, uh, HR and especially health uh, for NGO workers and employees around the world, and uh, uh, also um, Catholic Medical Mission Board. So uh, I should point out at this uh, stage that the awards are, if we can have uh, the next slide please, are um, for employees. So uh, companies, enterprises, organizations from all over the world, any size, uh, can apply to the awards program. There are three categories, um, small and medium-sized enterprises, large enterprises, and then we have a multinational category. So for multinational enterprises, for those with um, employees in various countries. Um, so any industry, any size can, can apply to the awards. Now the, the, the key really is that they, the, the programs follow the WHO, World Health Organization, Healthy Workplace Framework, or Model for Action, if you will, uh, that you can see right now. Um, uh, the model was developed uh, a few years back, I think now it's maybe three or four years ago by the World Health Organization and uh, a global um, a consultation group. And they came up with this model, which I think is uh, a pretty comprehensive, um, pretty logical, uh, uh, and it's, it's universal, universally applicable or relevant. So we have four main, main areas. I won't go into too much detail, but I think it's important to get an idea here before Telefonica gets into their uh, specific um, program. So we have the physical work environment. We have the psychosocial work environment. We have personal health resources, and we have the enterprise community involvement. And all of these areas uh, overlap with each other. As you know, some programs really touch upon two areas or maybe even three at the same time. Um, so it's really important for companies to go beyond you know, occupational health and safety, which of course is very important and it's complied by legislation. Um, and it's also important to go beyond your uh, wellness programs, which really look at your lifestyles and try to minimize your risks 
uh, and improve health. But it, it, it's bigger than that. As we know nowadays, uh, especially the psychosocial work environment has become so important as people, many people in, in many countries are really uh, having an issue with, with uh, work-related stress, uh, mental illness, mental disorders, depression, and so on. They're, they are all on the rise, uh, and it, I would say globally. And uh, companies are taking a close look uh, how to structure or improve the environment um, so not so many employees uh, develop uh, mental disease and are engaged uh, also, of course. Engagement is a big word um, and, and very important and motivated and have and the morale is there. And then I should mention the fourth main area, which is um, really enterprise community involvement. Um, you know, some you know, know better under corporate social responsibility of CSR. The, the WHO uses enterprise community involvement so that the employer also plays a role in the community, uh, not just for their own employees, but maybe their dependents or the community at large, and, and uh, maybe offer services or, or helps in that area. And then in the middle, you see a continual improvement process. Um, I think we're, most of us are familiar with that, you know, from, from mobilizing to assembling to assessing to planning and doing and then evaluating. So very, very uh, important. Um, I think uh, uh, you would think most companies do this. Um, unfortunately, they do not. We just, again, saw from the, the global uh, survey on, on health promotion from uh, about consultants that uh, only half of, of the sample, I should say, um, evaluate their programs or, or measure specific outcomes. So there's still a big gap, big gap and a big challenge for all of us professionals to really um, focus on that, you know, that companies should evaluate their programs and, and look for outcomes. And then at the very uh, center, ethics and values, I think we can all agree upon that it's important um, that uh, uh, companies, you know, should, should be ethical, so to say, and, and, and follow ethics beyond um, just legislation. And, and, and there, there's a value in investing in the health of the employee. And leadership is engaged, uh, committed, uh, supports not just uh, provide the, the money, but actually is involved and supports it. And of course, very important, involving the workers from, from the get-go to, to make sure their needs are met and that they have a say all along in the design and development of the program. So as you can see, uh, a very uh, uh, involved and co comprehensive model. And uh, that I, I would like to say that there are quite a few companies who have done an excellent job. And we've seen those in our applications uh, in terms of um, following this model and really uh, improving the health of their employees. Uh, the next slide. I do want to quickly mention that uh, while this is all based on the WHO model, that it's you know this is kind of like a disclaimer. Uh, I am required to, to, sh to show this uh, that it, the WHO is not officially involved or endorsing the awards as that's their policy. They will not uh, recognize private employers uh, um, or be involved in that process. Uh, next slide, please. So here we see the, uh, the award winners and finalists um, the last two years. The, um, the process is, is actually pretty exciting because two uh, companies per category, I would, the two finalists, uh, get invited to come to the Global Awards Summit. We have a panel of uh, five judges representing five uh, different continents. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say that Alberto Ogata from Brazil the, the former president uh, of ABQV is, um, is one of our judges. And uh, so the judges, they take, they take a look at the applications and they uh, decide, and you know, there's a scoring system obviously and evaluation criteria, again, following the WHO model. And then we, we uh, generate two um, finalists per category. So it's six companies and they are invited to come to the Global Summit. The Global Summit this year was in Shanghai, China. And next year it will be in Florianopolis, Brazil, as you can see in the bottom there, on May 18th and 19th. And uh, as you can see here, with some of the names of the company that I'm, you, I'm sure you're familiar with, there's some, some very uh, household names here. And at the same time, some companies you may have not heard about, especially the, the smaller ones. So we've actually had a company from Lebanon, Technica International, two years in a row, run, uh, being the runner-up. So they're trying hard to win the award, which is wonderful, which is great, and they have a, 
an excellent program, very dedicated CEO who, who was there in, uh, in the first uh, go around in London, uh, um, and they're doing a good job in a, in a, in a difficult uh, region of the world. Um, you know, this, and then at the same time, this year we had, um, as the winner of that category, was Spokane Regional Health District, who presented their case study a month ago. Um, all, very good program in the, you know, in the, in the northwest of the United States. And of course, uh, we have the winner of um, the uh, uh, Large Enterprise Award with uh, Telefonica uh, from Brazil. So before I hand over, I, I, I do like to say that um, the application process for next year will open uh, early January, I think it's January 5, and go all the way to, to the end of February, where you, know, you will have a chance to, to submit your application. But of course, you know, if, you're, if you're interested, you don't have to wait till till January to, to gather your materials and uh, and then the information is already up on our website um, on on the on the process and so but the official uh, pro, uh, application process begins in uh, in early January and uh, one more word uh, uh, on the global center for healthy workplaces um, we uh, we also run um, se regional seminars in different countries and uh, um, are rolling out some training uh, next year on, on the WHO, you know, aligned, the, the, the curriculum will be aligned with the WHO model one, once again. So uh, at this point, um, I'd like to hand over to the crew at uh, the team at Telefonica. I think we have a whole team online, which is wonderful. And uh, um, I think I'm going to uh, hand it over first to Aniele. Is that right? Aniele Vieira is a occupational physician at yeah. Telefonica. And maybe uh, you can, uh, yeah, ha take it from here. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Wolf. Okay, I'm going to start talking about uh, Telefonica. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. It's good. Oh, okay, thank you. So, I will first present you Telefonica Global, which is a very big company. Here we have some numbers to show you that. So Telefonica is one of the largest telecommunications companies in the world in terms of market capitalization and number of customers. Um, with its best class mobile, fixed and broadband networks and innovative portfolio of digital solutions, Telefonica is now transforming itself into a digital telco, a company that will uh, be even better place to meet the needs of customers and to capture new revenue growth. So we are over um, 24 countries and the average of 100 uh, and, uh, many professionals and we have more than 25 million euros uh, in revenues and more than 350 million customers and you can see some of our um, brands O2, Movistar, Vivo, Telefonica all over the world. Okay, next. So about Telefonica Brazil, just for you know a little about our company, we are the largest company in telecommunications uh, in mobile in Brazil and fixed lines in the state of Sao Paulo. We have uh, something around 20,000 professionals and we do the management of um, something around 40,000 uh, lives. In mobile operation, we have the industry largest, uh, largest market share uh, with 4,000 cities, 3,000 cities with 3, uh, 3G network, and we are the biggest in 4G. And we have uh, more than 9 million customers here in Brazil. And we have many brands here in Brazil, like Terra, TVA, Digestiona, AxisMed. Next. Okay, now we we'll start talking about our, our program. First, I will present to our team the Health Promotion Division. We are comprised by a multidisciplinary team from safety and healthy areas. 
we work all over the country with an structure of 14 ambulatories at main Brazilian cities. And we have services to employers at their workplace. And we have a properly and equipped space with medical and nursery teams. And actually, we have more than that. We have a nutritionist and uh, and other kind of health prom uh, of health promotion uh, of health health professionals that deliver many many services to the employers. Next, please. Okay, our program was called Bem Perto or Close, and this October we aligned our identity to the global program, which is Feel Good. We changed just the name, but the program is the same. We were just doing this change of name to align with the global program. So. so after Telefonic and Vivo merger, we selected the best practices of each company to create the Feel Good, this program. And we create the department portal in the intranet. The creation of the Impact Wellness Program endorses health promotion departments own actions and programs to communication putting the following pillars into two practice, which are to care, to protect, to shelter, and our club. Now I will give you a little more ideas about each of these pillars. And we have many interactive communications ways like Twitter, Facebook, to keep always on touch with our employers in the community. So, Proteger is the two care pillar, is a work safety division, was created with safety technicians and engineers to develop actions uh, focused on the promotion in safe behavior and accident prevention. How we do that? So, we first do the occupational risk management and when we do the identification and correction of the worker-related risk situations. We do the execution of CIPATI. I will talk more about it later, but it's a work accident prevention internal week. We do also the safety inspections, safety statements, and specific training to our employers and some leaders. And we also do the occupational health assessments, and we have also the SIPA management. What is SIPA? SIPA is a accident prevention internal committee. I will talk about it later also. Next. Okay. So we have the ACOLIR. It's another pillar of our program. In ACOLIR, we develop uh, actions to foster integration between people and their family promoting well-being and humanization. We have some actions to do this program. One of them is the Bem Perto Donation. In this campaign, we do, the, we do a, a kind of inspiration for people to do the donation with massive participation from our employers. So we have Telefonica Vivo, Donators Blank, and in this part of our program, we do we send many SMS uh, messages from to from telephone to mobile phones uh, that we do the communication, and it has no costs to the government. Uh, and all of these SMS that we send, uh, it's very um, aligned. To the government, to the agencies from government, and it's everything interacting. Okay, next. Cuidar, it's another of our program, which we have to take care. It's a medical and dental plan management. We have our own medical and dental plan. And we do the management of it 
for ourselves. We do also the management of our ambulatories and we have a program which is Nasser Bain. It's a support to pregnant uh, employers and also to the wives of our employers. Bem Perto Nutrição, as I told you, we have some nutritionists here. We do the immunization against flu, which we don't do only to our employers, but to also to uh, their families and to uh, every employers who work in, in our company, not just our direct employers. And we do the executive checkup program. We think it is important to do because the executive employers, they have, are always under huge um, pressure and stress. We do also the follow-up for hospitalized and absent sickness employers. It's another point that's very important to, to this pillar of our program because the employers feel like they are the company is really close and really taking care of their healthy. And Bem Perto Amigo, which is an EPA, Employee Existence Programs. In this part of the program, we do the care especially for different areas of our employers. They have a number which they can call and have a follow-up with psychologists and also to about juridic questions and it, it works like 24 hours a day during the whole week. Okay, next. Here we have some real pictures from, uh, from our ambulatory here in Sao Paulo. We have many equipments to take care of people. Okay, next. Here we have another place where we can, where we develop our actions of healthy. And we have also a, a nutrition. Here we have a, a balance that we use to take care of, of our employers. And we have the equipment to advance the care also, if anything happens here. Next. Okay. And now, the other pillar of our work is the, our club. Our club, we do, uh, the main point is the wellness to the, to the employers, and we do uh, many activities which go over the employers, because family can be part of it, and the community is always um, attended also, because we promote many activities like um, joy, theater, salon dance and services, photo processing, multimedia. We have tickets to movie and theaters and amusement parks with a discount in addition to tours and trips. We have a portfolio of partnerships with more than 400 entities like gyms, courses and schools, restaurants, healthy and beauty. Next. Oh, and this is to show how our program introduced to the World Health Organization, our methodology, which were we have an engagement of the leadership which support the program from directing board through periodic meetings where topics of healthy, safety and welfare are followed up. Another important point is that we have our own budget to, to manage, which are 68 million each year. The company has the ES indicators followed by the all the executives stimulating better business results as well a uh, bigger compromise with this program. Next, please. Okay. So about the employer's involvement, we have the SIPA that I told you before. We have more than 25 internal uh, committees for accident prevention, which are the SIPAs, with a team of uh, 195 people. So what is the importance of it? Is that it's a, 
important gate. It's a important. It's an important channel for we got uh, employers um, participation. Oh. Can you go back, please? Okay. It's important to for for us to discuss healthy, safety, work environment, and health indicators. And every month we do uh, reunions where we carry out action plans for continuous improvement. So we got what the questions that we should result, and then we have the opportunity to make the improvements which are necess which are necessary. And we have also a um, steering committee. And in this steering committee, what we have? The president and the vice president of SIPA, they can take the main questions and take it to the to our can you go back to the other slide? Okay. And this steering committee can take the sensitive issues for the directing board. So it's a, another important point that make close the employers and the direction and the of company. Okay. Okay. Now about the management. We perform the integrated management of information. We have the, uh, the identification of labor risk as basis for defining action plans for preventive and corrective actions. And that's the point that we can do the continuous improvement. And we have also the medical absence management and reintegration for workers who have uh, had a medical absence. So all, every uh, employer who are out of work because of health questions, when they come back, we have a team of doctors who will do an analysis and then we take these points to our safety team to do an integrated uh, action to prevent uh, new, new situations of health. We have also an accident prevention factor, monitoring and follow-up. Okay, next. Okay, during our management, we have uh, something that put us in a different place that a typical Brazilian company, the dudes uh, 15 of workers pay home for health insurance and the comprehensive program Pemperto, which now is feel good and the integrated management model we have made it possible to deduct to only 7.8 so it shows us that we are having good results with our with our doing Okay, next. About innovation. We have uh, another difference, which is the interactive participation and interactive communication with our employers about our program. Bem uh, perto, we have a new website which is integrated with intranet, Facebook, and Twitter, which has a unique channel for communication and acknowledgement of all the activities of healthy and improvement program. Okay, next. Uh, in the neighborhood exchange, we show that our, okay, our actions really um, goes also to the community. Um, Actions such as blood donation campaigns and the social SMS um, and the social SMS, which have already sent over than four million SMS with health tips and disease awareness and prevention, have been carried out through the 
uh, through the country in connection with governmental agencies, blood centers, and Ministry of Health. And just remembering that all of these SMS have no costs. Uh, our club promotes outdoor sportive activities, uh, street racing, swimming tournaments, fishing, card games, squash and mini soccer. We have more than 4,000 employers are members of uh, the club, not counting their dependents. We have also activities at joy, theater, ballroom dance, message, photo development, and other actions. And the activities to promote health are, uh, and welfare are extended to the society in the same measure that it involves all the employers in courtesy and quality of life and citizenship. Not counting social responsibility activities is supported by the company under responsibility of Telefonica Foundation because Telefonica Foundation supports many organizations with do the social jobs and um, future activities. All of them are supported by Telefonica Foundation. Next. Here we have some examples of our social and health promotion. Uh, this October we have done the Pink October. We have some pictures here of our actions. And this year we started doing a hair donation campaign for women who are undergoing chemotherapy. We have some partners to this to these actions, which are ABQV, the Brazilian Association of life quality, and we also have uh, as a partner the government health agencies. So our activities are always aligned with his campaigns. Okay. So we can see that all of these actions are, are leading us to the right away we think that we are in the right direction because we have, are having some good results. Um, and the Revista Possess, yeah, it's a magazine here in Brazil which gave an um, um, award for the best companies to work. And Telefonica, they, they do a ranking with 150 companies and we have a very good result. It's about the, the research about employer satisfaction. And we have a ranking, we had a 81.5% and healthy. We were in the first place about health and wellness. Next. And finally, we got this, the, this award, which was the Global Health Free Workplace that you are talking here. Okay, next. I just want to thank you in advantage for the opportunity to talk in here. And I will leave our email, my email, Aniele, and the Pascal email is also here. And uh, our new manager of the Vision of Health Promotion and HOS, Dr. Luis Augusto Salles. Lima Pilão. Thank you. Thank you, Aniela, for a, a great overview of your very comprehensive program. And uh, I, I think uh, I, I like, I especially like the fact that you really uh, made a special effort to follow the, the WSO model and its various components. So I, th I think for the, I'm not a judge, but I think for the judge it was, it was uh, easier to follow what you're actually doing in these areas. So that's, that's kind of a already a first hint at, at, at uh, interested parties or, or potential applicants to, to, to do that. But I think, I think we all saw that you have a very uh, a comprehensive and, and pretty mature program uh, going on at Telefonica in Brazil. I, I would like the, uh, to ask the uh, participants to uh, ask questions by typing them in in the, in the question box on, on your uh, GoToWebinar inter interface. And uh, I'll, I'll just you know read them out as they come in, um, but please do take the opportunity to to ask questions, and uh, 
we, we in, in our webinars we always leave uh, um, enough time to, to, to for, allow for some interaction. So it's not just the the perfunctory five minutes at the end of a Q and A as we often see, but really really allow some some discussion and and for, give you a chance to really uh, find out what we. Uh, get some more detail on what makes the program successful or how they did it. So um, let me, um, let me uh, start it off here with a, with a question for, for you. Um, in terms of um, accidents or occupational health and safety uh, challenges, what do, you, what do you see at Telefonica? What are, what are your kind of your biggest challenges in terms of the physical work environment? So, you know, potential accidents or occupational uh, uh, risks? I think that the, our biggest challenge is that we are a very big company. We have many employers and they are all over the country, you know, and here in Sao Paulo sometimes it's easier to, to take care of them, but the employers which are far from here, it gets a little harder. But of course we have a team there but we have employers all over the places. I think that's the biggest challenge. Okay, so so that you're pretty spread out, so that, that's a challenge. And uh, like in terms of the, the occupational risks, I mean, is it is it mostly um, uh, ergonomics, maybe, in terms of how your work office uh, work settings or your offices are are, are set up? Um, or what do you see there, and or is it is it something else? Is it some other uh, occupational hazard that you are dealing with? Here we have the the main troubles that we have used to be the ergonomic problems, but now the it's changing because now it's more about the psychologist things, you know, psycholo psychological diseases. That's the main point now, because we have many employers which are in important positions. So that's the point now, that we are trying to work about wellness. I think that that's the point to deal with the psychology troubles and disease. Yes, yes. I, th I think, again, what I alluded to earlier, I think we're seeing that in many different countries, um, the, the psychological cha issues and risks. Uh, I, I know that some countries are still uh, struggling with, with more traditional occupational risks and hazards, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that's, that's what, what most companies these days are faced with. Um, I have another question here uh, come in on, on um, your indicators or your metrics. Um, what, which kind, it sounds like you're really gathering and, and, uh, and you, you, your data and measurements and making sure that you're achieving success, which of course is great. Which, which uh, indicators or metrics uh, are you reporting up to the, to the, to the higher, the board level or the, the top management level? What, what do they want to see? Okay, we have the indicators about the number of uh, accidents, occupational accidents, uh, including here the biggest number of uh, work accidents are the are the accidents in the way to the to the job. That's the main point here. So the indicator that you use is the the satisfaction of the employers about the environment uh, for work and the disease related to the disease related to work. Uh -huh. That's the main point that we take to the leadership. To the board leadership. That, that's interesting. So if I understood correctly. Uh, you, see, you said accidents on the way to work. So, are you talking about when when employees are commuting, whether it's by uh, uh, I don't know car or train? You mean that on in terms of accidents? Yes, yes. The, our bigger number of occupational accidents are those are this kind of accident. Okay, that's that's very interesting. And then um, uh, another follow-up question. Um, 
you're talking about satisfaction. Uh, um, how often do you do you measure that for of your employees? We do the research. We do a research about the the climate situation. Can you understand me? Uh, can you repeat that? Yes, I can. I can hear you. But I, uh, you're doing your research for what? <coughs> Sorry. It's a kind of uh, research that we do in a company training by the, the adaptive employee. I, I will ask for uh, help from Jian, which is here. Yeah. Uh, okay, sure. No problem. <laughs> just, just. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have a kind of treatment here, special. We do a search uh, every year trying to identify the problems with our employees. What I mean, we are doing searches, uh, trying to identify positive points and bad points between our relations with our boss or between the company and the employee. Okay, and, and that's on an annual basis? Is that right? Or, or more often? Yeah. Annual, no, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Once a year or yeah. more often? Than no, no, it's a once a week, it's a once a year. Okay, okay. Okay. Very good, interesting. Um, another question um, on the social media uh, that you're using, as a, you know, as a telecommunications company, you're, you're obviously uh, heavy yeah. into that. Um, which, which one, uh, you, you talked a lot about the SS, SMS messaging and, 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 and how far that spreads across the country, which is, which is really wonderful. Um, yeah. which, one, which, one, which one do you think is most, most effective? Is it the SMS or, or is, it, is it Twitter? Or what, what do you think, or, A, which is the most effective in your eyes, and B, which, which, which one is growing? Which social media channel is growing the fastest? Okay, the, with the employers, the most effective uh, way is the intranet, uh, which we have a, in, a corporative email, and we have a, an internet. Internet, yeah. And the internet is the um, internal communication with the employers, but with the community, it is the SMS. It's more effective, and we here in Brazil. Uh, much more people have access to SMS than to uh, Twitter, for example. Okay, yeah. So for the larger community, SMS, and for your employees, the internet is uh, the most used or effective, okay? Yeah. We have another point that Jian is going to talk. Okay. Uh, let me explain one thing. Uh, we have a different kind of tool here in Brazil. What Telefonica is doing now is create an uh, instrument to communicate to our, our clients, our final clients, and our employees talking about the situation. What I mean, uh, if you have some chronic disease or something it's a worry and we need a specific treatment that someone can do in our home or doing during, you know, like some exercise uh, and other kinds of, uh, what can I do? It's something like prevent the accident or prevent a situation, prevent the disease. Uh, the point of saying uh, SMS explain these points. It can help can we prevent disease or we can do something to treat them in, a, in our house or in the hospital. It's a, it's a SMS prevent disease, you know? Not just for employees, to our customers too. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, we, we see a, a growing number of uh, technology companies getting into the, this area field, so um, that's, that's uh, excellent. Um, okay, um, Heather, if you could chime in if you don't mind, uh, because I don't see the other questions and I may be missing them here. So, uh, could, could could you read a few? If you could unmute yourself, is that is that is that possible? Yes. Um, one that just came in. It says, Wolf, could you mention about the award they got um, and the relationship with ABQV um, and the partnership? Um, I'm not sure that I understand that question correctly, but but uh, the uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, First of all, for those of you, ABQV is the Brazilian Association for Quality of Life, 
um, very active uh, uh, um, uh, professional organization, been around since the mid 90s, I believe, uh, pushing you know the the field of health promotion at the workplace, quality of life, qualidade de vida, as it's called in Brazil. Um, and we've had, as I mentioned earlier, Alberto Ogata as uh, one of the judges, and he uh, was the president for a long time. Uh, I just stepped down for, for the association. Um, uh, so that's, that's kind of in terms of the, the relationship with the awards program. Uh, but obviously, you know, uh, like companies like Telefonica in Brazil, um, you know, they're very linked into ABQV and, and, and all the activities that they offer and, and are a member and so on. So, so, so there, there is an influence, of course, um, from, from the association and uh, been very active. So I think that that's the, hopefully I've answered the question. Uh, to the person who asked the the next question, how did you achieve the attention and commitment of the management? Do you have a policy? I think that it's through the BSC and also the culture of company. The company really worry about the employer's opinion, the employee satisfaction, the culture of company. It's about it. And, and the, our executives have a very strong culture about prevention. So it's part of company, you know. Right. The next question, do you see a need for measures in terms of an aging workforce? What are those? Okay, we have this committees that I talked to you, the SIPA, where we have where we have the the, communica the communication between the employers and the company. So we have a, a big uh, team to do with these points, with these questions. And they are spread all over the country, so we make it easier. Okay, and Wolf just got me if you have anything you'd like to add, or I'll just keep going with the questions. Yeah, if, 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 yeah, sure. Just keep going for now. If there's more questions, I can always chime in. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. The next question, could you talk about the difference between employee satisfaction and employee engagement in this context? Mm. Let me ask one thing to complete your question. Uh, you are talking about engagement uh, in the products that we're creating in healthness here, or engagement about the programs that we create during the year, trying to create a better ambiance and a better situation environment, a better environment to the employees. They they did not clarify in the question, so maybe you could talk about both both ways. Uh, I'll try to, to, to get it both ways, yeah. What? Sorry, can you repeat? Well, uh, the, if I can chime in, because the, the, we don't, we can't, do, we only see the questions and, and we don't really how it's actually being, being posed. So I, I think maybe, um, I, I would say, as I, far, as I read it, I would say the, the relationship maybe between employee satisfaction and engagement in, of employees in general at the workplace, in, in work. How engaged are they in their work, you know, and, and the link with employee satisfaction. That's, that's, that would be a logical one to me at least. Does that make sense? Did, did, did that make sense or, or do you want me to rephrase? Should, can, can you rephrase, please? Yes. So employee satisfaction uh, as one area, and, and, and employee engagement in their work. Um, 
you know, you know how you measure engagement. You can measure engagement. So, what what is the what is the link here between those two? Or have you seen a, a a link at Telefonica? Uh, you are talking about the engagement. Yeah, uh, it's because it's not clear for me because when you are talking about engagement, you are talking about what kind of engagement? Engagement uh, in your profession or engagement yes. in your uh, uh, in your program is of engagement. Let, let, let's use the first one, engagement and work. How engaged are you? You know, like the, the Gallup uh, questions, the Q12, along, along those lines. First one. Uh, okay. Uh, using this, this knowledge, uh, we think that the employee are prepared, to, they are receiving a very attention about the environment and about the, the health care, and they know that they are secure here. And one of the things that we we can see in using these kinds of programs or using these kinds of services, and we 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 down the numbers of turn off. You know, uh, the number of employees are returning the company is very down, is lowing, is going is going down. So we have a specific situation because we are investing in health situation and receive in return the dedication of the employee and the the last number of turn off. Okay, so you used employee turnover as, as one of the indicators for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, good. Heather, go, go. if there's other questions, go ahead. Okay, did winning the Global Healthy Workplace Award help your organization? Isso certificou internacionalmente o nosso programa. A gente tinha uma certificação nacional para a WTV e o agora reforçou mais ainda. Que é que é a companhia do Global. Ah. Que que é o Global faz para a gente. O nosso, o nosso programa é independente. É só Brasil. Ok. Our program, it is independent from Global Company. It's a Brazilian program. So, we are independent. We aren't uh, uh, directly related with the global, but uh, we have the culture of company. It it help us to uh, yeah. It help us to to do this program here. It's the culture. I think that's the point. And yeah, the question is about the award. Did the award help your program? The global award. <coughs> The global award. The, oh, the, the okay, program. yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right. No okay, <laughs> okay. We are sorry. I understood the global company. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, the the global award was very good because it because uh, it it's a recognition. It's a recognition uh, from other country from our work from our uh, of our work. That's that's good, and it makes a uh, strong. And show us that we are doing a, a good job and a big incentivation uh, doing this job and to try to improve always. That uh, it shows that we are in the right way. In the right way. And it shows us that we are in the right way. Excellent. Very good. Okay. The next question. Could you discuss some of the preventive measures that you do to specifically reduce stress with your employees? Medidas que você pode para reduzir os acidentes dos seus funcionários internos, os seus diretos dos acidentes internos, entendeu? O que você realiza mesmo? Okay, we do the we have trainings for the employers, and we also, for example, uh, here we haven't many accidents into our building because we have many uh, administrative employers. So, um, to prevent ergonomic questions, we have the ambulatories, which are important point, because uh, the first time that the employer feels something is going wrong, like the mobile are not good, they came to ambulatory and say, oh, I have some pain. And we tell the safety team they go to their workplace and do the changes that are necessary. I think that's a point. And another question is the SIPA. 
this committee bring us a, a point of attention and we can improve it before it became an accident or a disease, it's prevention. All right, the next question, how long did it take to build your award-winning program? It's a large program, I think. Tem mais ou menos uns 10 anos entre as duas empresas. Pós-fusão, a gente fez as melhores práticas, mas mais ou menos uns 8 anos. Ok. Because um, this program is a result of the mix, uh, the of the merge. Of the merge. This program is a result of the merge of Vivo and Telefonica. So each company has like eight, ten years with his own programs. And 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 it has three years that uh, we had the merge. So we got the best practice of each company to do this program now. So I consider that it has like eighty eighty years. Yes, uh, using a complement of the situation, I think the, the program is a lot is like some uh, like program. The two companies, Viva and Telefonica, was working in these subjects. Each one with uh, the main point different, you know. Uh, Telefonica was very worried about security, and Viva was very worried about health care of their employees. When we had the merge between the two companies, we created a new culture and we tried to, to assimilate, we tried to take the best of each one. Uh, since that we have the merge, uh, we are working and attaching all the points that we think are main parts. What I mean, uh, after one year that we are some with some base points with our programs, uh, we tend to we tend to pick the the, the, the two best. You know, uh, when we face a situation that we tend to have a lot of problems with one subject, we tend to attack the subject until we have a better situation. We are very worried about the wellness of our employee. This is the most support that we have here. Thank you, Jim. That's, that's excellent. We all know how difficult it can be with a merger to, to continue the, the programs and the culture. We're coming to an end. Maybe, maybe as a last uh, uh, um, comment from, from your part, are there any words of advice that you may have for, for potential applicants? Uh, interested parties who want to apply for next year, any, any, any words of advice? Okay, we think that the most important is to listen to the employers, because they are who bring us the main questions, the main points that we need to improve. Uh, we think that that's the key. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Just, just being a, a, a different point. Uh, one of the words that they come today is understand, understand the employee. So we are doing searches uh, all the time, trying to identify why the problems are happening and what kind of change that we need to do in our program. So our main point in any program that can be worried about the wellness is the employee, is our customer, you know. Here we are we are offering the same idea that a company. The company sell telephones or internet or something like that. And the area of, of uh, health needs to be looking our customer. That is your our employee. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think we're at the end, and that's a, a great uh, ending comment there. And uh, you know, listen to your employees. That's a that's a strong one. I think we we all agree with. So, I, I'd like to give a very uh, special thank you to the entire team. I think you did a great job, and and uh, had a really good team approach to answering the questions. And we had, I think we had a very rich uh, Q and A Q &A, uh, discussion uh, portion here of the webinar. So thank thank you so much. Also to Alberto, thank you for leading up to the webinar for helping out, and of course to Heather. So uh, thanks to everybody. We will have the, the recording available through our the globalhealthyworkplace.org web, website as well as IAWHP. 
And uh, I'd like to make you aware of our next uh, webinar is on December the 3rd with IBM, the uh, multinational enterprise uh, category winner. So thank you to all of you for listening. Have a, a great day or rest of your day. And uh, goodbye to, to everybody. Thank you. Obrigado. Can I, can I come on and say thanks to everyone and the opportunity to express here our, our opinion and our experience about the subject. And we have a, a, a special thank you from Mercy that was one of the person who was a front of this whole program. Mucho obrigado. Mucho obrigado. <laughs> Tchau, tchau, tchau. Obrigada, obrigada a todos. Obrigada a todos. Thank you.